Hey, 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 welcome to Friday. Welcome to April. It's time for the Hamria Crash Course. Today is the patron picks episode. So the $10 level patrons get to get some extra perks. And one of those things is, wow, that might be a little loud. Uh, they get to pick the topic of the show. Is it too loud on the audio? Sounds loud. Hmm. We'll just turn the sound off. How's that? <laughs> anyway, this is Patron Picks, and we are going to be talking about WinLink over HF Radio, specifically HF. There are some of the things that I'm going to talk about on the HF side are going to be applicable to VHF, but we'll get through that as we go. So we've got some news. Oh, man, we got a lot of people. Got a lot of people in the chat. How's it going, everybody? Welcome again to Ham Radio Crash Course. I am Josh KI6NAZ. We come out here just about every Friday, unless I'm in a hotel and the internet is bad, to talk about ham radio, is, you know, all kinds of different topics, have fun with it. Usually a lot of how-tos, helpful stuff. We cover some news in the beginning of the stream, which I'm going to cover shortly. Only have a couple of things, but, um, you know, we're moving forward with ham radio, so we're always trying to learn something new, cram it in our noggins, and then go out and try it. So a lot of what I'm doing... I hope you go out and experiment with amateur radio. It is both a service, but it is also a hobby. And we need to go out there and experiment with that hobby. And that's the only way we learn. All right, we got to get out there and practice. Uh, mic levels seem lower. Okay, Crank, uh, cranking up that little bit, and I'll give it some more gain. Thanks, uh, thanks for that. Appreciate the comment there. In fact, I'll pull my mic in a little bit closer, too. How's that sound? Hopefully you're not getting blown out there. Excellent. Excellent. Now it's way too loud. <laughs> right on. So we got Tony. I love learning trial and error. And error. Yeah, there's a lot of error in trying. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think sometimes we get caught up on the tests and um, being the most right. And, and we really only care to argue from the from perfect rightness. And I think that if we do that, we stifle ourselves and we don't move forward and we won't learn. Uh, you have to make mistakes to get better. So don't cloister yourself off. Go out there and experiment and try. The good thing with amateur radio is you can experiment anonymously. Obviously, I'm not saying transmit anonymously, but you're not doing it in front of somebody, so you don't look like a fool. So keep that in mind. So today we are talking about WinLink, which is email over amateur radio. So the homework for this week is check out WinLink. It's actually really, really easy to do. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend that. John W. says... Taking the general tomorrow at my local ham fest. Oh, I love I love testing that is in at, at a ham fest. It makes it so much uh, more fun. So I find that awesome. So you can get your license and you can go buy a radio or you can go buy something to go along with your along with your station. So congratulations with that. Guys, we will be doing a Discord after chat as always. I think we got loyal in the room or somebody in the room. If they're not, if you click in the description, there's going to be a link to the Discord, which is basically an IRC chat room. It's both text chat and uh, voice chat. And the after chat is a voice chat. And it goes on for a very long time. And all the questions get answered if you have them. Otherwise, it's just a lot of fun shenanigans talking about radio and often many more things. And, of course, we will do call-ins. Oh, wow, Dirk. Love your show. Got me interested again. Got my tech and general last week. KI5 EDO. EDO. Very good. I Congratulations, and thank you for the support. I really appreciate that. Uh, I was almost forget. Um, it, it, I, I've never had this actually happen. Somebody sent me a check. I won't show the other side of it, but it's from Adam. Uh, KC3MHQ. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Just a little bit of money. They don't like using social media, and I understand that. So that's very nice. Never had somebody do that before. So thank you. Um, okay, so we covered, we'll have call-ins at the end for anybody who wants to call in and ask a question. We do that live, and that's awesome. So you can be talking to me, and then people can help out in the chat as well. Man, a lot of people out there. So thanks, everybody. We got a bit of a YouTube bump uh, this week. It was pretty nuts. We got a lot of subscribers, and uh, hopefully you're watching for the first time, some of you out there. VDocG asks, question, can I get license in the States even though I'm not a U.S. citizen? I am an, in, uh, an international student. I think the answer is yes, but uh, really it would depend. So it, it, it's going to depend on your country of origin. Maybe. I don't know. But likely, yeah, you probably can. Yeah. Uh, okay. Ah, let's go on to the news. So I, uh, I have a website here I want to show you. And I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. Dom, 
our admin over on the Discord and the Facebook side. Well, oh, why are my fingers not working? There we go. Uh, he's got something going on. Let's pull up that website. He's got hotels on the air coming up. Uh, what this? What is this all about? Hotels on the Air is a special event that coincides with the Hamvention. So the, we will be in our hotels going to Hamvention, and we will uh, we will be working radio. We'll be doing a contest. So uh, very excited about that. That's very, very cool. Somebody's saying more mic. More mic. I need more mic. No, that's not good. Let's see if I can fix that really quick. Um... That's about all I can do, I think, at this point, without really derailing things. Uh, yeah, that's about all I can do right now. So I apologize if it's a little quiet. Crank up that volume. Apologize about that. But Hotels on the Air. So Dom is basically, along with the other admins, we're setting up kind of a contest um, on Hotels on the Air, which there will be more to come about this. But basically, like uh, Parks on the Air, this is going to be like Hotels on the Air, which is going to be great. So make sure you check that out, hotelsontheair.com. The link is in the description. And follow that because uh, Hamvention is coming up really quick. We're going to be there in a little over a month, which is like no time. So I'm very excited about that. I will be going, and I will be posting a lot of information because the other thing I want to mention, w5kub.com, right? Every Thursday I'm there at 8 p.m. Central Time. It's a live stream with a panel of people. Tom's doing a huge live stream for Hamvention. He's actually driving and live streaming the entire thing, and then when he's there, he live streams every day. This year they're going to have mobile cameras that we can go out to the swap meet, to different booths, and we can do live on-the-scene reporting, which is is going to be awesome. I'll probably grab a camera and do that. Uh, Roland Masterson, W5DDZ. Thank you very much for the support. I appreciate that. So, yeah, again, Hotels on the Air, W5KUB.com for the live stream for Hamvention. And I'm going to work something out. I'll be posting videos. So, it's going to be a crazy weekend. Definitely get ready for that. All right. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I, I, I did pick up a sponsor, and I found this was kind of interesting. Um, it just so happens to coincide with uh, this whole WinLink email thing. And, and they reached out to me, and they're like, hey, uh, you want to do something, just a little plug? And I said, yeah, absolutely. This is perfect. So let me show you. Um, new sponsor, HamVPN. It's not the internet. It's just amateur radio. So, you know, instead of NordVPN, you're just going to do HamVPN, which is basically just ham radio. So that's the sponsor. I'm just kidding. Uh, but I had a couple of minutes before the show. So I decided, hey, new sponsor, HamVPN. Uh, you don't have to worry about the internet because it's just RF. <laughs> okay. Uh, somebody said Brew Crew. Uh, I forgot. I got to grab that. Uh, so this is kind of comical. Um, I, I Edison was sick all day. So I had to uh, run to the store and I just grabbed Kilt Lifter. Now, Kilt Lifter is made by a lot of different companies, and it's usually pretty good. Um, this is made by the Four Peaks Brewing Company in Arizona. They rang it up, and it came out to like $3 or $4. I'm a little scared. I don't know if this is going to be any good, but cheers, Brew Crew. Thank you for the support. Ooh. Okay. That is certainly a beer. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Man, <laughs> that is not great. Uh-oh. I just turned my audio on because I clicked on the website. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. So, WinLink. I've got to cover some stuff here on the desktop before we go any further. Um, I am using my 7300 to do this right now. I initially wanted to start out to use the FT891. The problem is you need two things. You need a USB of some kind or some other connection to do cat control, which is the computer-assisted terminal, I believe. And uh, in the case of the FT891 by Yesu, which is this guy, lovely right here with the rails. Who knew rails? It works with USB for the cat control, but it doesn't do what the 7300 does. Hey, Tim Snyder. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate the support. 
what the 891 doesn't do that the 7300 does is have an embedded audio interface on the same USB connection. So on the 7300, when you plug the USB in, you get the cat control and you get the audio, the receive and the transmit. One cable gets it all done. The FT891 and most other radios need two different things. They need a cat control to PTT the radio and control it if you're going to move around frequencies. And then they also need a separate audio interface. So very quickly, let me show you. Um, this is what I have on order, which is a device that just splits out the audio. So that's the FT891 uh, adapter connector, the little DIN. I believe it's a six pin connector that goes on the back to two audio jacks. And that goes to, I have one in front of me here, that goes to a USB sound card. And that's the simplest way you can do that. Um, I have one of them on the Ham Radio Crash Course store on Amazon. There's a link in the description. This is what, $9? And that's what allows you a separate USB interface to the computer. What you don't want is to have your audio connection going to like your headphone jack or your microphone jack because anything that plays on the desktop is going to be um oh nice ethan said that seller k6 vhf will make custom cables so very good if you use a usb interface you have a separate usb device and so that you can control the volume and different settings in the windows software or whatever native os you're using which is much easier than connecting to the speaker jack or the microphones at jack so make sure you go get something like that um, or you can just uh, use the 7300 go buy one of those a step up from that would be a signal link and a signal link is basically a go between for the audio interface portion of the radio connection the nice thing about the signal link is these little dials in the front are actually manual controls for the volume and the transmit volume so that you can really fine tune in your radio without having to go fiddle with Windows or whatever operating systems, the you know virtual sliders. That's not great. Um, it's not, it's a signal link USB. But anyway, those uh, are probably the best way to go. SIG, oh, okay. <laughs> it's SIG, no, link, doesn't matter. If you type that in, you'll find it. Type in signal, signal link or signal ink uh, USB and it'll come up if you Google it or it's on Amazon. But anyway, it's what allows you to basically control the volume and it does the USB connection to whatever your DIN connection is on the back of the radio for audio. So you're going to need that for all kinds of digital modes and it makes your life a little bit easier. So you can think about getting that. All right. So let's see. Let's go back to the desk. So I have my I'm going to move the mic for a second. I have my 7300 here. Uh, I'm not on any particular band right now. We'll work that out with um, WinLink software. But I do want to mention that if you do have this radio, I like to put it, click menu and click meter. And then you can see the meter displays for your SWR, your ALC, and the power output, which you're going to want to monitor as you're doing any kind of digital mode because the software is going to jump around for you. It's going to make the radio move through its cat control. So you don't really need to spend much time looking at the waterfall, for example, even though if you want to do that, you can. All right. All right. So let's let's run this signal. I'm sorry, WinLink Express. So, oh, you know what? No, let me go back. I want to show you WinLink. All right. So the WinLink website is winlink.org. The description, it's in the description if you want to check that out. And this is where you go to download the software for WinLink. It's pretty easy. You just go to download. Oh, WinLink Express Standard. Okay. Hey, software updated. And you can do the download there. Um, if you scroll down, there will be the blog. To be honest, uh, WinLink is a very straightforward um, setup. It's very reminiscent of the WSJTX. So if you've been able to set that up, you will do pretty good at it. I noticed that I didn't mention. Yeah, I am uh, KI6NAZ at winlink.org. We're going to go live with WinLink in a second. So if somebody wants to send me an email through that email address, now would be a good time to use that. Jim asked, why would I use WinLink? 
Um, lots of reasons. One of the easiest ones is, ones to mention is emergency situations. Recently, there were you know disasters where information has to get exchanged between like first responders and a hospital that people are going to, and they don't have traditional comms. So what they'll do is they'll actually email patient info via WinLink. It's it's very handy for that. Uh, you'll find that there are a lot of Envis application, close in vertical skywave inductance type stuff that allows for really good emergency preparedness. People that are on sailboats or people that are going around the country in an expedition will definitely be without signal, but you can still do uh, email over WinLink. So that's a totally good reason to use WinLink. I know that uh, Julian, O-H-8-S-T-N, he uses WinLink, and so do some of the other uh, Twitter friends, the Ham Radio Twitter friends. So if you aren't on Ham Radio um, Twitter, basically go on Twitter and start looking up ham radio people like me, and you'll get all kinds of other uh, hams, and they're all pretty active, so I just wanted to mention that. I call that the ham radio Twitter. So go download WinLink. It's very straightforward for Windows in this case, and you run it, and this is what it looks like. So very no frills type application here. I got an email from 86DM the other day. I uh, can't really make this bigger. Can I make this bigger? Let's see. Can I roll the wheel? Nope. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> stay calm right on. Emailing patient records. Yikes. The HIPAA Nazis will catch you. So that's a really great question because somebody asked me about that. I was outside the HRO and they were talking about using WinLink over HF. And I was like, man, how do you handle the privacy laws? And they're like, well, it's kind of a gray area right now because it's – they didn't call it encrypted, but it's obscured because it's in digital. And you, I, I don't know that it qualifies in an emergency situation. Plus, it's not, um, I guess they try to keep the information at a minimum. I'm really not prepared to talk on that subject, though. I'm going to talk about how to set this up. So we're going to use two modes. Um, yeah, Zach just mentioned in the chat, too. I was going to hit that. We're going to be talking HF using my 7300, but WinLink is also VHF, UHF, packet radio. Any way you can interface or send that data through a radio, you can technically use WinLink to pass it and receive it. So keep that in mind. In fact, what we're going to be talking about this ADOP, uh, AR, sorry, RDOP or ARDOP is a new standard for WinLink that will technically work on HF and VHF. Can Win uh, ID five one three one two eight S? Can WinLink use some encryption like PGP? No, no, it cannot. Um, you're not supposed to use encryption at all on amateur radio. You cannot obscure through encryption any of your transmissions. Um, Ryan Pog says in a life or death situation, I wouldn't care about HIPAA if it's going to save my life. It's kind of a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with monitoring EMS. Yeah. Yep. Uh, K eight MRD. Be careful with, uh, part 97 wind link stuff. You don't want to use it for business purposes. Correct. Yes, indeed. Uh, good point, Zach. You can use PGP, technically, but it is not legal within the FCC rules. That is a very good distinction. Technically, it is possible, but you should not. So um, you basically, the, the app that comes up when you start it is just the email app. It doesn't do a lot of things. You can go to the WinLink Express setup. That's where you're going to set in your call sign, your email. Oh, that's my address. <laughs> I just uh, hippoed myself. Um, let's see. Some of this stuff, I just filled in the WinLink Express setup, and I left that alone. Let's see. I left most of this stuff alone because you really don't need a lot of it. What you're going to do is you're going to click on one of these drop-downs. Now, there's a couple of different options. There's Telnet, Packet, Pactor, Robust, Winmore, RDOP, Vara, Vara FM, and Iridium. Those are all the mechanisms in which you can exchange data over WinLink. So you can use Telnet if you want to go direct via the internet. You can use Packet, which is largely VHF. 
You can use Pactor, which um, I believe can do both, but primarily HF. What we're going to be talking, though, is Winmore and RDOP, or A-R-D-O-P, which is the new, call it new mode, new digital mode that's used for Winlink. It also has other uses. It's related to Vara, um, but anyway, it's, in, it's included in the WinLink Express software now. It's brand new, so ARDP is probably what we'll finish the chat out with. Uh, let me actually show you something. Let me show you something. Um, I want to... Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't want to... <laughs> you're going to see my information. But WinLink Express Setup... If you click that and you go to the right hand corner, there's a button to click to activate the beta software. And that's what allows you the ARDOP. So if you want to do this, you need to click that and it will immediately ask you to install an update. You're gonna need an internet connection to do this. And you just go ahead and push the install and you'll uh, basically be able to do ARDP. But we'll start with the old school way. We'll go to Winmore. So you select Winmore from the session and you click this little thing that looks like uh, two arrows stacked on top of each other going that way. Click that and you'll get a new window. You get two new windows actually. Great. The neighbors have the, the neighbors are home. So this is kind of your, uh, the larger window is your current session information. And the one on the right or the left, sorry to you, is the Winmore sound card TNC basically. So what you're going to do here is if you're setting this up for the first time, you're gonna to go to the Winmore link session, click settings, you're gonna to go to Winmore TNC setup. Now from here, oh, my audio's all screwed up. If you have a USB interface like a Signal Inc, or Signal Inc, then you would select that from the dropdown. Make sure you remember what your interfaces are. In this case, the playback device for me is the microphone, the USB audio codec, that is for the ICOM. And the playback device is the speakers for the USB audio codec. So you select that. Um, in my case, I am only doing 1600 for the bandwidth hertz. And you click update. And it will cycle. The radio just kicked on, so we know that's working. Then you're going to go to radio setup. Uh, in my case, I preset this up for a 7300. It's very simple. Very, This is very reminiscent of WSJTX. I am using upper sideband for digital. COM3 is the USB port. I want to connect at 9600 baud. No RTS, no DTR, and the PTT port is also the 7300. So I'm going to close that because I know it already works. Okay. Channel selection is the next button you're going to click, which is on the uh, WinLink. I'm going to go back. So on the WinLink session right there, that session window, you're going to click Channel Selection. And you'll get this cool list of stations. So this is updated via the internet, if you have internet connection. But you can also update this via a connection to a remote station via WinLink. You kind of have to do it once, and then you can keep updating it through HF if you don't have internet connection, which is really nice. So how you do that is you just update table via internet. Click that now. Boom. It'll go off and do it. This takes a little while. I probably shouldn't have done that. I could have just said click the button and then. Uh, Zach, exactly, says it takes 15 to 120 minutes. Now, that is true because we are talking about very slow data rates, particularly for Winmore. You can see right here, um, very fast. Okay, we're already updated. So what it's going to try and do, in this case, you can sort on different columns. I'm sorting by distance. Sorting by distance can be um, problematic. If you don't have an Envis antenna, this station, 37 kilometers from me, I would be able to kick butt to that guy, except I don't have Envis, and they may not either. So I, I can't work them. I've tried. doesn't work. So I generally, uh, the one that's selected, this SDR, 612 kilometers from me, that's the guy I end up using. Uh, I believe that was the one I used last time because it was around 40. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and select him. Now, 
on the right hand side you've got the green numbers and the red numbers and the yellow numbers that's basically calculating the time of day where you're at what the sun cycle is at which i think we're at like a 71 right now for the sun cycle value and so it will basically try and tell you i think that this would be a better way to go and we'll go through how it tries to show you that because there's some options you can click that will pick the next best node if you can't get the one you want so we're going to go to k6 sdr So now K6SDR is populated in the, the name tag there, and the center frequency is listed here along with the dial frequency. Okay, so I didn't do any of that. I just double-clicked it, and that did it. Uh, we're still looking good on the left-hand side. In fact, let me turn on the audio. I'm going to tune my radio. Already tuned. So we are technically... Somebody's CWing on top of me. So there's a good, uh, that is a good time to mention <laughs> that the Winmore Winlink tries to let you know if it thinks the channel is busy. You'll get a little, we're not seeing it right now, but you'll, this busy detector won't say, it'll say busy, in use or something like that. So if it says that, don't hit start. But also turn the radio up and listen for a little bit. That, that's digital. So we may want might want to jump to another uh, station. Ah, Zach says if you update via radio, there is an option to only show nodes that you can get a connection to. That is a great thing to do because it takes a long time. Okay, so it's quiet again. Right? We're going to go ahead and hit start. Immediately keys the radio, and we'll start seeing activity on the left-hand side, hopefully. But we're not. Okay, I'm going to abort, because that's not right. Uh, the waterfall is not updating. So this happens. I'm going to end this session. Radio switches back to CW, which is the mode I had it in. You can hear it, right? The filtering just went up. Let's try that again. Now, hopefully that waterfall should start updating. Hmm. Let's try to start it again. It's not showing me the little thing up here that says I've got latency. Uh, it seems to be updating, but the waterfall's not updating. Something is not right. Transmitting power is at 100%. Yes, WinLink Express is only Windows. Well, maybe not. I heard it. No, it didn't like it. Hmm. Let's see. Did I do something to screw this up? No. I'm going to close WinLink and start it up again. I found that sometimes this stuff can be a little fidgety. I'll open another session. What I'm looking for is this waterfall to start filling in. And it's not. No, that uh, Zach, the black screen, the black rectangle, should be filling up. So something's not right. Well, when all else fails, shut everything down and start all over again. So I'm going to turn the radio off. <laughs> uh, yeah, radio is set to USB D. USB D uh, is digital. Hopefully, everybody knows that. And the D 
means that it's going to get its information, data, cat control to the USB in the back. Antenna very much connected. I've been using this for a little while. Well. Of, of course it doesn't, you know, work. It, it's been working, but it doesn't work. So I've been playing with this all week. Okay, I'm going to do... Uh, no, mine was displaying constantly. So I'm going to stop this for a second. I'm going to get off wind more. Hey, thank you, Jack. KN6ASE. I'm going to go off of Winmore, and I'm going to go back to uh, ARDOP. That was the last mode I used that worked successfully. Let's see what happens there. It's going to look very similar. Uh, I will note, so this screen, you see there's only one screen. I have to click on the taskbar item for it, and then it comes up. Um... Okay. Okay, let's try another one. Let me just see if I can get it going. As usual, as usual, I'm thinking that as <laughs> I must be affected by my uh, the streaming stuff. That's the only thing I wasn't doing before. No, it worked fine. I'm saying it, it worked all before. The only difference is I started streaming, which sounds about right. It's like it won't connect the audio. Okay, hold on. Now we're troubleshooting live. That FT8. No, it's showing no audio on the TNC. It's not a question of bandwidth. That's the uh, receive side. You would get something. See this codec, this thing that says codec start okay? We should just be getting data. Should just be coming in. So something is not correct. I feel like it was displaying in the beginning too. 94 is the right... The ICOM address is 94 on this radio. That is true. PTT is working, so we know it's not that. The radio is switching back and forth, so we know it's not that. Waterfall is checked. Uh, in this case, see, I got it clicked. It's not doing anything. Spectrum, not doing anything. Disable. Okay. We're just gonna go without the waterfall. Maybe that's not a problem. Let's uh, let's find another channel selection. 
Let's go with somebody who I know works. Uh, by the way, there's a lot of hunting and pecking that goes on when you use this. I'm going to tune up again. Oh, somebody's out there. Somebody's on that. Hopefully you can hear that. Oh, is this there? No, I don't want to mess with that. I'm going to change the different channel. There's somebody there. So I know it's not working correctly because this is the station that's actually transmitting and the app's not telling me that it's not working or it's busy. Uh, well, there's always this. Let's do this. be another way <laughs> okay we're going on a wing and a prayer here here we go okay I think maybe that might help hold on let's cancel this let's close out Blake Austin Hughes, thank you, buddy. We'll definitely have to download this one and uh, and re-upload it. All right, let's go back to Winmore. Actually, no, let's stick with our app. It's like I have to do like private streams now to test everything out before I go live, just because everything's all on the same computer. All right, TNC setup. Audio is blank again. Uh, I've got a new. Selection here, new selection here. Aha! I figured it out. Okay. I know what it was. Oh! Okay. Stop. Okay, see the waterfall? See that waterfall right there? Yeah, buddy. Okay, so what the problem was is the microphone is connected to the same powered USB hub as the radio. I probably should have known better than that. So, you'll live, you'll learn. Okay, let's try that again. We're clear, 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 start. There we go, that's what I wanted to see. So all this stuff starts happening, you know, whoop, like there. <laughs> I swear, you turn a camera on and go live, and your troubleshooting skills just go. I'm thinking of that GIF. So I'm not hearing any response, so I don't think this one's going to work. Blake, Austin Hughes, thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. I appreciate the, the vote of confidence. I know, I need a ham VPN contract. Uh, yes, Patrick Dickey, I had a, I have a powered USB hub that I had. So I had a, a, a webcam connected to it, one of my webcams, and it got all mad. So I was like, okay, disconnect that. I had the microphone and the radio connected, and it seems like it was stepping on. What's up with that? Somebody else out there. All right, we're going to leave this guy alone. I'm going to go back to KE, KE7XO. Come on. You're going to play a lot of this. Um, 
you're going to play this a lot, like the selecting station, selecting station, selecting station, which I'll show you what you can do to ease that a little bit. So that's not making it. The, the, you can hear the radio. It stops, it keys up, it transmits, it stops, it keys up, it transmits. No bueno. Not happening. There's somebody there, but not me. Not for me. So I'm just going to go hands off a little bit. I'm going to click best channel. I'm going to let it pick. I don't generally do this um, for a couple of reasons. So the first thing is it tell it wants to give me this AJ7C person, even though I've changed. And, and let me show you this best channel setup. Um, I had this set to get them away from me. Uh, minimum path quality 70 minimum distance um, I had that set to 70 so that I wouldn't get actually I should probably make it a hundred kilometers so now when I hit best channel it should give me something else no baud rate should be fine Yeah, I don't want... I'm going to click next channel. We got it set to 1600 for bandwidth, which is what we want. Really quick, let me check my bandwidth on this side. That's fine. All right. Yeah, I know. I noticed that. So it seems to think most of the channels are busy. We're a little early for 80 meters. I have the most success with 80 meters. So we change to XE2BNC right now. And we'll start in a second. Let me tune up again. Looks quiet. So it's, it's working now. We just have to get to the station. Failure. Back to channel selection. So this is 179 kilometers from me. Let's try to get out a little bit further. Normally, I can hit this guy uh, amazingly. This is the guy I normally go to, KE7X0, but on 80 meters. So we might try that. Is it dark? What the hell? Let's try it. This is going to take a second. Tune that baby up. Okay. Engage. Don't sound like he's making it. You usually start hearing back. We'll get there. Ah, no. Let me make sure I don't have anything set on my radio. Okay. No, it's correct. Let's try another one. Love sounds quiet. Note, we are not on the hex beam right now. 
I wanted something a little bit closer, so we're using the end fed. Um, I, the hex beam is not great in close. It's a, kind of a long distance thing. I'm not trying to do DX win link. No dice on that one. Let's do a best channel again. I don't understand why. Oh, wait, what's going on? That I don't understand is we have channels, so it doesn't like the, uh, it doesn't like something. Normally when I hit best channel, it gives me whatever the next best channel is. Noise just shot up. FN Vids TV asks, "What do you think about N-fed antennas?" I'm thinking about making one because they are cheap and easy to make. I like them. I think they're good. Um, it's not as the same as like a resonant dipole. Well, I scratch that. It's not that it's not as good. It's just a resonant dipole is tuned for whatever frequency you're on. Sometimes uh, N feds, they need to be tuned to where you want to be. Sometimes you need a bigger tuner. Uh, the Chameleon Antenna's base and uh, base N fed that I'm using is really nice, and I don't need that much tuner. I don't need more than a 3 to 1. Yeah, it's been, Steve, it's been a little tough. <laughs> Tony, KG5TON, don't drink that beer again. It totally screwed up your feed this week. Man, no, that was me putting the uh, the radio and the microphone into the same USB hub. Learned a valuable lesson. There's people down in there, though. That's the thing that, uh, okay, let's try to go out a little bit further here. What's the difference? Mode 200. Let's try this guy. Yeah, we'll switch back uh, to win more in a second. You'll know. You'll get, you'll hear the, uh, the act message. Acknowledgement. Okay, let's switch back to Winmore. I have found that uh, the RDOP or ARDOP is, is more reliable, though. Okay, let's just double check everything's fine there. That we changed. <laughs> Evan, appreciate <laughs> Evan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So I like this guy. I don't know if it's coming in or not. I hear something. We'll see. Nope. You'll know if you're already at this many calls, you're not gonna make it. Um, we, we might be able to do three. Jace, I should be studying for my general exam tomorrow, but I'm enamored with my new radio and watching the stream. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see.
I've gotten this guy so many times, so I... Very frustrating. I'm going to open the call-in so we can do call-ins while we're trying to make this work. We will get it. We'll figure something out. The later it gets, the easier 80 meters is going to become. Wait. Come on, buddy. Come on. That was it. That... Come on, KX7X. Oh! Come on! We got it! Here we go. Maybe? Yes! Okay. There you go. Need more power! Yeah, um. Thanks. It just takes a little time, but it'll work. <laughs> A better, a better antenna a little bit higher would be able to do it, but I literally have this thing maybe up about 35 feet and then just straight down and then snaked all around the outside of my uh, house. So what you'll notice is the, um, the pattern. This is not the high data rate pattern since this is Winmore. We'll switch back over to uh, the other mode. Yeah, this is literally dial-up. Not even 28.8. This is like... 14.4, baby. Yeah, XX. The reason I'm not using the hex beam is the hex beam is a DX antenna. I'm not trying to DX Windlink. I, you don't know what the other stations have. So you want to keep the contacts closer. You don't want to be trying to make long-distance contacts if you can avoid it. You can, but since you don't know what other people have, you, you might not want to risk it. Okay. What am I getting them at? They're an S7 to me. I don't need to send. I want to receive. I want all my emails. Wow, there you go. I just sent you a message to your Winlink email using JS8 call APRS email on 40 meters. That is a thing that might not have ever been said in human history. <laughs> Are we receiving now? Hey, I got one. Somebody said, good topic on the chat side. Winlink, Colorado ham. WL2K KE6VRL Greetings from Tennessee. They're coming in, guys. Let me move the call in box. There we go. Oh, okay. Let me turn it down. So you get the idea. You don't need to hear the the noise. We've got connection. That's what matters. I'm just trying to give you the real feel, the real experience of it. Yeah, right? It's a war games modem where you take the handset and you slam it down on top of the, uh, the receiver. Oh. Why did the... Uh... There we go. If anybody tried to call in, it might not have worked. I don't know why. It logged me out. So call back in if you want to. 300 baud, man. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I see it. Via 40 meter JSA call APRS email. By the way, KH2SR, we worked each other on uh, FT8 yesterday. And I, I saw your tweet. That was awesome. So I love that. This is not good. This is not good. Actually, uh, in compared to other, I guess, $3 beers that you could buy, a scotch ale, not bad for 
three it was like three to four, i think it was four dollars out the door with tax so james i know you as quirky qrp i don't really know your call sign so i i i worked you and then i was like i felt like you called me back a couple of times and i was i had stepped away and i came back and i was like oh this guy sent me something so i tried it again and, and it looks like that went through but yeah oh my goodness Oh, that's myself. I sent myself email. They're going to ban me from this service. Ryan Pogue says, I'm going to mail you a treehouse beer. Right on. Do it. Uh, when I went to when I went back east to Virginia, we don't have Yingling out here. And my wife was like, people keep talking from the east coast. They keep talking about Yingling. Just send me some Yingling. I'm like, okay. So I, I went to the, I went to the store, bought a twelve pack of Yingling, took a USPS box, and just dumped them in there. Just just dumped it and crammed them, packed them in as much as possible. No padding, just shoved them in there, and then just taped, like almost the entire roll around everything, and then shipped it. And K eight M R D radio stuff Yingling is way overrated except if you ask yourself what one dollar beer would you rather drink one dollar for a yingling in a lot of cases if you during a happy hour you can get yinglings for like a buck right now or at least it was three years four years ago when i was out in the east coast a lot um i don't know no i'd rather have no no not a rolling rock or a molson for a buck i'd rather have a yingling amber for sure not the lager the amber Oh, there we go. Now we're getting it. Wow, we got a lot of email. It's not updating the the, the app yet, so I guess we got to wait. That's kind of offensive. Saint Ides, huh? Hmm. Does Colin work down here? I guess I can go right there. Yeah, but you're you're all talking Russian River. Yeah, absolutely. That's all way more expensive than a buck. Canoe beer, lawnmower beer. Yeah, I, I I, don't drink much of that anymore. Hey, there we go. Okay. So, let's see. KE6VRL. Good topic. Thanks for the info. KM4ACKAC. I like that. You're, you definitely got to do some satellite work and some, some uh, wind link with that call sign. Thanks for the great show. Greetings from Tennessee. Right on. Colorado Ham. My buddy. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. So, okay. So let's, uh, I don't know if we're receiving anymore. Are we still getting? We're receiving right now. So let's just wait. I don't know what we're receiving yet. I feel like the data packets are already complete. Okay. Alex Johnson says, my go-to cheap here is PBR. Eh. Yeah, it's okay. It's real cheap, though. The YouTube video, the ad with the dude wearing the uh, American t-shirt, you know, the American flag t-shirt, is possibly one of the funniest things. Okay, we'll go radio silent now. It's getting a little annoying. So I don't know what it's uh, waiting for. Labatt Blue, Citra IPA. Does Winlink only allow one connection per station? Yes, I've tied up this station. This station is only working with me. It cannot cooperate with multiple. Um, oh, we got more coming in. Australia! Hi from Australia. Sending you this email from Winlink, which I use in outback areas and remote areas of Australia. There is yet another reason why you may want to use Winlink. Love the videos and thank you. That's terrific, Tony. VK3TNL. Awesome. I am. Thank you for that. That's great. Hey, Josh. Thought I would send you a test email to make sure everything is working both your end and mine. Hope everything grows great with the stream. Okay. So um, I'm gonna do a quick. Uh, let's. Uh, let's see. I thought there was a way. Message acknowledgement. That's what I want. So I want to post that to output. Oh, there it happened. 
That is one of the downsides of this app. I don't know why this happens. But it goes all font small on me. So now you can't read the font, I bet. So I'm going to do a message acknowledgement for uh, most of these really fast, and then we'll reopen it. Oh, man. Winlink will kill ham radio if you believe that dissenting article you linked in your enhanced tech privilege live stream. Yes, uh, the, the tech enhancement. The owner of that blog uh, hates Winlink, thinks that it's it's people are just going to get their license so that they can go tour the world. The, the rich sailboat uh, captains of the world are just going to use Winlink to avoid having to pay for email from something like Iridium or something like that. And it's still going. Holy smokes, we're going to get banned from this service. Uh, it says do not reply. Oh, interesting. JSA call APRS email from KH2SR via 40 meter JSA APRS email. And it, repl and it says do not reply. Matthew Kinney asks, I tried to sign up and I need to pay for it? Not to, to demonstrate it, not to try it out. Only after you like it and find a use for it, then you can go ahead and pay for it. Okay, so I'm going to... Acknowledge receipt. Acknowledge receipt. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to acknowledge these all, and I'm going to fire them back at you guys so that you know I got them. And that's what we're going to go to another station and we're going to use a um, RDOP, A-R-D-O-P. CQ, and thank you for, okay, uh, here we go. I guess I should put in there 7-3, but technically this is a contact. I guess I owe you all QSL cards. It says don't reply to this one, though, so I'm not going to be able to reply to you, James. Okay, so that means I got seven in the outbox. Um, I'm still receiving, it looks like, so I'm going to wait because I want to I want to close this and restart it because the font's just totally gone. Zach, it won't work. It will not work, buddy. All right, hold control. Does nothing. Spin that wheel, baby. I don't think so. Nope. Yeah, it's totally a weird thing with this app. It's the third time it's done it. I haven't fig I haven't targeted exactly why it happens, but you can see it doesn't change the TNC. The TNC... Whoop, come back. What just happened? <laughs> don't shake screens. I forgot about that. Yeah, I like the Mac when you can just double click with two fingers. Do you remember Net Zero? Pepperidge Farm remembers. In in it. Yes, Tony. In it. I love that word. I absolutely love that word. Oh my god. What's oh am I sending now? Wait. No. These are all outbox. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, I'm gonna stop. Okay, thank you, buddy. So we've received everything. I'm going to click the stop button. I'm going to let it disconnect. I'm not going to abort. I'm going to stop because it'll save my call at the end. Doing the right ham radio thing. Sending my ID and CW. Juno, man. Net zero was bad, though. All right. So 13 minutes. Okay. Uh, 13 minutes, it was 11, 10, 23 bytes. So 1,023 bytes a minute. Yikes. That is not a lot. Okay, let me close this really fast so I can reopen it and you'll watch it. Everything will go back to normal. What a pain. Hey, look at that. 
Okay. Now, I'm going to switch over to RDOP, now that we know we can hit this guy. I don't know why you went all the way down there. Bruh. Oh my god, everything's all cattywampus. There we go. Okay. All right. Man. All right, we got it back. We're going to go back to the same guy. Uh, no, we want my bro. It says channel busy. See, you can see that? Channel busy. I'm going to tune up again. I don't know why I need to. I think it's the same frequency. I don't think it's different. I don't know who he's talking to. I closed it. I said stop. KE8HWD. I don't know. I don't know. I need to make time to do digital. I have a signal, a signal link. I just haven't had time. You know, let me tell you, you'll spend a little bit of time up front to make it work. And then once you get it working, it's really easy. It's really straightforward. You could just sit down and then boom. It makes it it makes it really easy. So absolutely try it out. Jeff Burlington trying to bring up all the old email services he could he could ever think of. Are we good yet with this thing? What's going on with this channel? Okay. We switched to ARDOP. quiet we're gonna wait never mind <laughs> okay we're gonna look for somebody else while this is going on we're gonna go to the same channel but on 80 meters the same uh station No. Oh. No. What I do? I screwed it up. Ah. Hold on, I got to fix this. Wait a second, try that again. Hey, I don't mind the dislikes. Tells me that uh, I had an enticing video that they had to just be active and click it. That's uh, not a great beer. Here we go. Okay. Now, same thing now, but we are on RDOP. So the sound's going to be a bit different. Much different. You thought it sounded like a modem from the internet before. I loved ICQ. I loved ICQ. I used ICQ a lot. This is the internet. ARDOP. Okay, good. Uh, Arthur Riddle. A signal link. Uh, it just does the audio, and that's what the dials are in the front for. You still need a USB connection for cat control. What's going on, buddy? We sending?
There we go. And that's it. So I just acknowledged all those emails. Okay. So we received all the emails on Winmore, and we did the um, the acknowledgement on ARDOP. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Nobody's going to call in, I guess. That's okay. We're going to go over the Discord soon anyway, right? Uh, yes, Ham Nation and W5KUB still uses IRC. It's a modified version of IRC, but yeah. Um, okay. So that took a little, <laughs> took a little bit longer than I expected. Every time you turn the stream on, every time it gives you, um, something interesting. Anytime you do digital modes, I, I just start doing CW videos because I, I don't know. I just do CW videos from now on. I just need a key. Just the radio and a wire. And that's all I need. All right. So we're going to hop over to Discord here shortly. Do the after chat, which is going to be a lot of fun. The email is still good. KI6NAZ on winlink.org. Try it out. I, I think at least try it out. You'll have fun with it. The, um, the software is not difficult as long as you're not trying to run a live stream at the same time, which, you know, a lot of people aren't. And I, I respect that. Um. <laughs> SSTV is a great digital mode for you to get banned on YouTube. Yes, <laughs> that is true. Indeed. Taylor Lobb says, I personally would love to see a CW stream. Well, I need to get better at CW, but maybe me just doing a CW stream will make me a lot better because it seems like my troubleshooting skills have just gone through the roof <laughs> whenever I have to troubleshoot live. So one last thing before I go. This is the Patreon picks. I <laughs> Everybody's going to just get rid of their Patreon because uh, all their support <laughs> because of how bad that stuff was with the computer at the beginning there. Sorry about that again. But thank you to the patrons. Uh, remember, it starts at a dollar and you get the newsletter. By the way, I need to mention for those that are still watching, all 155 of you, thank you so much. If you could hit a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Uh, the newsletter is going out for Patreon soon, and it's going to go out to everyone. It's going to be a wide open release. And the reason for that is it's going to be my text for the technician enhancement, um, what I'm sending to the FCC. You don't have to send it. There'll probably be something else in there fun, but it should come out this weekend. That's my goal to get it out to everybody. But I wanted to make the, the text, not legalese, but I wanted to, you know, I guess make it a little bit better than my normal, my normal writing, which is pretty bad, pretty grammatically horrible. Uh, Matt S said he wanted to thank for the help in Facebook, uh, Facebook got the tech on Saturday. Awesome stuff. Thank you. Anyway, to the patrons, thank you so much for the support to the producers that this, that picked the show for today. Sorry. Sorry, everybody else. Uh, William Horton, Chris Ebert, Carrie Blackwell, Jason Brown, Jason Siebert, David Dancero, Danny Miller, Anthony Franklin Miller, Franklin Lewis, Michael Nieswender, Brad Snyder, Gareth Broadhead, Dennis Dunderdale, Justin Blackburn, Garrett Larson, the infamous no name, John, uh, Dean Johnson, Ben Kellum, Dennis Mickelson, George Gaini, Andy, Kenny Miyamoto, Ron Thorson, Dennis, he was in the chat. He sent an email. He sent me an email twice, so thank you for the help there. Michael Baxter, not the one from the TV show, Devin B. Hedge, Mark Chase, Mark McCarty, Julian OH8STN. I'm sure you subscribe to him too, right? Uh, Raymond Cracker, Geraldo Kelso, Bo Brewer, Ronald White, Corey Sheldon, Brad Nadal, Stephen Hunt, Ronald Pelkey, Ronald White, KE8HWD Rob, the Colorado Ham, new patron Thomas Strickland. Thank you so much. And the Brew Crew. Blech. Don't get the kilt lifter, whatever this one is. No, it's not good. All right, I'm going to Discord after I take a brief potty break, and I will see you guys soon. Thank you for subscribing and watching. Had a lot of fun. Um, anybody who wants to follow, take the Discord link above me or in the description. It is a IRC chat room. What you want to do is you click that link, you join, and you go to live stream down at the bottom. Scroll down on the left-hand side, all those chat rooms. Scroll down to live stream. Click on the thing that says hashtag live stream, and then click on the other one that's like a voice or a microphone, and that is uh, for talking. And that's where I will be talking in about five minutes. So I'll meet you over there, okay? <laughs> What's that? May the sunspots be with you. I love it. All right, guys, take it easy. Play me out.
Why is it not playing me out? What's going on here? Can't even make my, my music play me out anymore. Come on. Oh, well. That's it. So, yeah, we'll figure it out next week.